This is part two of a two-part series. In the first episode, we discussed congressional candidates in Philadelphia, in Delaware County, in Pennsylvania. In this episode, we will discuss Chester County, the 6th District, Montgomery County, the 4th District, and Bucks County, the 1st District. Welcome to PA Voter Information Network. This is Larry DiMarco, your host. Chester and Montgomery congressional races give stereotypical examples of a difference between the Democratic and Republican Party platforms. The Democrats are running two progressive women and the Republicans are running two successful white male businessmen. In Bucks County, Congressman Fitzpatrick will try to hold on to his seat for another term against challenger, Democratic challenger Scott Wallace. In Chester County, Republican candidate Greg McCauley is a business owner and tax attorney who has creative ideas on immigration and lowering student loans. All three suburban Republican candidates want term limits on Congress and want no budget, no pay laws for legislators. McCauley gave an interview to me earlier in the year. Click the link and you can watch his entire interview where he discussed his platform in great detail. Here is a video of Greg on his website. Did you know over 300,000 immigrants illegally crossed U.S. borders just last year? And in just 10 years, nearly $300 billion in taxes have been lost. I have a compassionate solution to the immigration crisis. With the Sustainable Worker Visa Program, we can ensure that everyone pays their fair share of taxes. This will bring about $100 billion to our economy every year. This will help us fund Medicaid, Medicare, and Social Security far into the future. This is not a path to citizenship or amnesty, and we'll know who's here for the first time ever. Chester County Democratic candidate Chrissy Houlihan summarized her background on her website. She was a captain in the Air Force, a top executive of a major apparel and footwear company, a founding partner of B-Lab, a nonprofit that promotes B corporations, as an aside, I did an entire video on B corporations, corporations that are permitted to exist for the benefit of society, not just for their shareholders. They also can have a conscience. I did a three-part series on the corporation. Please click uh, this link for more information. She worked as a chemistry teacher in North Philadelphia and was a teacher for AmeriCorps. She served as president and COO and CFO for Springboard Collaborative, a Philadelphia-based nonprofit focused on improving early childhood literacy. The priorities that distinguish her from Greg McCauley is health care for all, a path to citizenship for undocumented aliens, equality for LGBT, campaign finance reform, protecting the environment, and protecting Roe v. Wade. Here's a clip of Chrissy expressing her displeasure of the Republican tax plan, directing her comments to Congressman Ryan Costello. Congressman Costello, you are correct that American workers are the linchpin of a vital and healthy American economy. And I saw this firsthand while I helped scale and build several organizations right here in our district and in southeastern Pennsylvania. Organizations like And One Basketball and B-Lab and Springboard Collaborative. And yes, we absolutely need to build an economy that invests in those very people and rewards their very hard work. But if you want to claim that you value investing in people and in education and rewarding hard work, then you need to do it. And this bill does not do that. And if you want to claim that you value cutting taxes for low and middle income families, then you need to do that too. And this bill does not do that either. You also failed to mention in your statement that with this bill, many Pennsylvanians will actually pay more in taxes. The tax changes, if any, that people will feel will be temporary but the tax changes that corporations will feel will be permanent. You also failed to mention that the cap on our state and local taxes and the impact thereof will be impacted primarily on our public schools. Report after report has shown us that the middle class families in our community and beyond will be very hurt from this bill and in fact not helped at all. Your vote was a middle, uh, basically a giveaway to Republican donors, paid for by our middle class and paid for by a ballooning deficit. And if you don't believe that, or you don't believe me, you have only to look to Speaker Ryan, 
who is already telling anyone who will listen that the next steps to be able to afford this bill will be cuts to Medicare and cuts to Social Security. Montgomery County candidate Republican Dan David saved American businesses billions of dollars when he and others have determined that U.S. investors had been defrauded of more than $50 billion by Chinese companies. Dan has lobbied dozens of members of U.S. Congress and Senate to safeguard U.S. retirement and other savings. His story is showcased in the documentary, The China Hustle. When you rip off Americans, you're not just stealing our money, you're stealing our future. Running my own financial research firm, I exposed phony China-based companies stealing over $15 billion from Americans. As a private citizen, I warned Congress, and they did nothing. So I did. Now, I'm running for Congress to work full-time to protect our savings and retirement. It's not just about the money. It's about protecting our future. I'm Dan David, and I approve this message. Madeline Dean is a Montgomery County state representative running against Dan David for an empty seat. She discussed her top three priorities in a candidate forum. It is very hard to say top three priorities, but I'm going to use three that will become the umbrella for all others. And they're very interconnected, so I think you might understand. When I first ran, I ran on a collection of E's, the three E's. So education, the economy and jobs, and ethics and good government. <coughs> Think of how intertwined those three E's are. How we educate our children determines our future, not just theirs, but ours. It also determines our economic stability and their future. So that's what I ran on, the economy and jobs, educating our kids. And the final piece is ethics and good government, and I'll break that out a little more. Uh, I was delighted to be asked to serve on the ethics committee uh, in Harrisburg. When I ran for office, I said, I'm never going to take a per diem. I'm not taking a phone. I'm not taking a car. I will submit actual expenses. I'm one of the few legislators who actually posts her expenses online every month, so you know exactly what I'm doing. I'm in it for the work. I'm not in it for perks. I'm not in it for per diems. That's the way I believe public service must be. Moving to the first district. Ryan Fitzpatrick is the Republican incumbent in the new 1st District. His brother introduces him. Ryan grew up in Levittown, lived in Bucks County his whole life. He's a local boy, played ball on the local ball field, attended all local schools, but he always knew he wanted to serve our nation. He was sent by our country overseas. One of the things that uh, Brian was responsible for was interrogating Al-Qaeda terrorists. When Brian was in federal law enforcement, he put corrupt politicians behind bars. His whole life has been about protecting our nation and serving our communities. He's not afraid to take on Washington. He knows that Washington is rigged. He wants term limits, and he wants no budget, no pay. Brian is supporting economic policies that puts more money in people's pockets and workers' paychecks. Brian understands the people of Bucks County. He understands what's important to them. He knows these things because he's from here. I'm proud to call him my brother. We need Brian in Congress now more than ever. In Bucks County, Scott Wallace is the only male Democratic candidate of the Philadelphia suburbs. He's a progressive candidate and emphasizes his pro-women record in this video. My parents' uh, activity with Bucks County Planned Parenthood turned into a lifelong passion for them. Uh, working on an international nonprofit that promotes access to family planning all over the world. Uh, that then grew into protecting women's rights in areas other than family planning. Our, the foundation that they were running and that I then inherited uh, developed a major program area in fighting female genital mutilation, which is a harmful traditional practice uh, practiced in many countries in Africa and the Middle East and the Far East, and fighting against child marriage the many ways that patriarchal societies uh, control and subdue women. For my mother, this was a huge passion. She just, she looked at little girls for whom these practices, on whom these practices are, are practiced. And she, I think, saw herself as a vulnerable young girl. One reason I've continued my parents' work in women's empowerment and protecting girls, especially from these uh, harmful traditional practices and working to empower them and the greatest empowerment, of course, is education. 
so just helping girls understand that they have choices in life. We need to have a change of leadership at the top. I think it's coming. Uh, I, I think this, uh, the movement uh, to push back against the misogyny, uh, it's not an accident that it's happening now in the age of Trump and in the age of Weinstein. It, this is a huge movement whose time has finally come. In reviewing all these races, I liked all candidates and individuals who are running. Coincidentally, most, if not all candidates, are consistent with their party platform. So I ask, how would you vote? Do you also vote along party lines like I would do here? Would you ever vote for the opposite party of your registration, especially if you believe in your party platform? Please contribute to this poll. I would greatly appreciate your feedback. This has been part two of a two-part series. I hope you liked it, and if you have, please subscribe for notifications of new videos. Please click the like button. Also, if you haven't subscribed, why not now? Click the bell too so you get notified of new videos. Signing off, tune in next time. Bye for now.